All right. Welcome to our group assignment. Uh, my name is Ian, and I am joined by Natalie King and Summer Weber. Um, today we are going to be talking about E. coli, uh, otherwise known as es Escherichia coli. So the microorganism. A couple things you need to know about this microorganism is that it's one of the most common types that are still known today. It was discovered in 1885 by Theodore Eskerich. Um, if you recognize the last name, that's because they named it after him. Um, there are different types of E. coli. Um, both are considered qualitative, which means that they can grow with oxygen or without. Um, so they can live in both worlds and have the best. Uh, they are gram-negative, rod-shaped, non-sporing. Um, they have flagula and are motile. Um, that just helps both those things just help with movement and help attach um, to certain areas where it uh, infects. Uh, the growth for this uh, microorganism is 37 degrees Celsius, and, or for us, 98.6 Fahrenheit. Um, now, back to those two types of E. coli. There are harmless ones that are found in the normal flora of the gut. Um, and believe it or not, it produces vitamin K. Um, there are harmful winds that infect the intestines and fecal matter causing disease and only warm-blooded mammals. Um, here is a picture of E. coli itself. Um, to the left, you'll see a more um, under the skin, if I might say, of E. coli. Um, as you can see here, you can see the DNA, the cell membrane, the flagula. Um, and then to the upper right, you see E. coli K12, which is the harmless one. And down below is E. coli O157, which is found in contaminated meat, uh, for example. So potential problems that could arise if E. coli were to be eradicated. Um, there would be no beneficial strains, such as the K12 strand of E. coli in our gut, which could be um, could then lead to slower breakdown of food. Um, essentially, there would be no digestion function, um, no food absorption, and vitamin K2 production would not exist either. Um, what would the world be like without E. coli? There are a few pros, but there is a big con. The con would be that good bacteria from our gut would be completely gone. Pros would include normal, no more harmful strains found in our food, and it would also have cleaner drinking water, and people would not experience diarrhea, vomiting, or stomach cramps after being affected by the harmful strands. Could we solve this problem? Uh, chemical X can get rid of E. coli, but it can also kill the good E. coli. Here's how we could solve the problem. The problem could be solved if K12 becomes anti-resistant to chemical X. And uh, another way of solving it is uh, we could have a substitute with the bacteria we can no longer give, like B7, B12, vitamin K, and laxatives. But all this is with a good E. coli, so it's kind of hard to find something that has all that in one. What are the potential costs? Another way of saying that is, what is the potential cost, meaning if the good E. coli was eliminated, what would we do to replace it, and is it worth it? I personally don't feel like that it's worth trying to replace E. coli because it could um, deactivate the good E. coli. 
which means the bad E. coli could kill the good E. coli. Or they just are both inactive, so there's you're going to need something to replace that. And there's too many benefits. It would be very difficult to make like enhancing reproduction, digestive, and immune health. And the body would be at risk for different diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Eradication. Should uh, chemical X be used to just eradicate the Y altogether? Now, mind you, that when we're saying eradication, we're meaning even the good one in our gut. Um, when you think about this, you think about how it gives you vitamin K, how it helps with vitamin B, um, how it helps uh, fight off other bacteria within the gut, um, and it helps uh, produce laxative to help, help um, with going to the bathroom. Um, so you think about all these pros that were talked about and um, and how important K a coli K12 is, and it just makes you think, should we just eradicate it altogether? Um, and in this slideshow, you heard the good, the bad, and the ugly. What do you think? You know, I think refining the chemical X to make um, the E. coli K12 um, anti-resistant to the chemical so it does not harm it um, is one option as well because um, if we take it and only target it to a specific one then the other one doesn't get affected leaving it still good for us to use without it causing any more damage. Um, I would recommend that we go back to the drawing board and maybe think about ways we can improve this chemical X before we start giving it out and using it on people. Um, it's important because normal for our gut helps our digestive processes and everything like that. Without it, uh, you know, we'll have complications. Um, so that's, that's the most important thing about the eradication is that I feel like eradication should not be done not yet, anyway, until we figure out how to save the good E. coli. Uh, e. coli uh, 0157, on the other hand, is the one that produces the bad stuff, the, the food poisoning and all that. So eradicating that, I'm for it, but eradicating the good one, I'm not for it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed our presentation. Um, uh, it was very well thought out. Hope you liked it.